<clears throat> what's up tribe how you guys doing go ahead and hit that subscribe button i'll be like this video this is the real housewives of new jersey season 13 episode 14 so we start this episode off we have marge and jen fessler with jen fessler's um, mom and sister who happen to be identical twins who still dress alike i think i think the thing with the twin thing it goes in cycles like when they're kids and they dress alike it's cute when they get to a certain age, it's corny. But then when they get older, it's cute again. And they're at the it's cute again age. You know, for me, that's my opinion. Don't know twins get in my comments coming for me, okay? That's just my opinion, okay? So, um, then, um, and they were cute. You know, we found out Jen Fessler's story, you know. Um, she didn't get her, her mom and aunt were best friends with Barbara Streisand growing up. So, she grew up. You know, Baba Streisand just coming by the house and singing a little bit and a little humming a little ditty, okay? Um, Jen Fessler is very intriguing. You know, she slept with, you know, uh, Mr. Soprano, and then she got Baba Streisand. Um, she said that her parents were divorced when she was young, and they both remarried and got divorced again, so there's a whole lot of drama with that. And she said, you know, growing up, her mom had some, some she didn't say issues, she said some challenges or something, however she worded it. And she said, so she moved around a lot. Um, and I, she didn't get too deep into it, but I feel like maybe, maybe her mom would like money issues or maybe just stuff. Um, but she said her aunt was always a constant in her life, you know, and again, they were funny. They were cute. They were funny, you know, all that good stuff. So then they asked about Ireland and they talked about, you know, Marge talked about Danielle and how she just thinks that Danielle is immature and how, you know, Danielle... Everything, all roads lead back to her and her brother. All roads lead back to her issues with her brother. And so that was just kind of how that conversation went. So then um, we have Frank and Brittany going out to dinner with Dolores and Paulie uh, with their kids to celebrate Frankie Jr.'s job and all that good stuff. And it is so funny because I really feel like Frank thought he was going to roll up in there and, like, intimidate Polly or lay the, lay the law down or whatever. And Polly was just not here for it. Polly was, was handling Frank, and I loved it, okay? So then they asked Polly about, you know, well, how, you know, when did you move here? And, you know, what was your first job here? And he said he started off as a receptionist. Now, I'm not sure what Polly does now, but I know Polly lived in that nice-ass house with that Rolls Royce in the driveway. So whatever you did from becoming a receptionist to where you are now, Polly, kudos to you, bruh. Kudos to you. And Frank talking about something. You know, I really got a chance to know Paulie, and I got a lot of respect for him. He reminds me of me. So you a disbarred attorney. I don't know how y'all the same. Okay. Then uh, Brittany going to ask him, did you speak a lot of English when you got here? Ma'am, he's from Ireland. They speak English. I mean, granted, it's an accent and some of the words are not the same vocabulary-wise, but he didn't have to learn a new language to come here. I'm just, just going to throw that out there. <laughs> so then Frank was like, well, did the Lord tell you the, the type of ring that she likes? And again, this was his way of trying to put it out there like, yeah, I know what the Lord likes. I know what she likes. Frank and um, Polly was like, yeah, I already bought the ring. Baby, Frank ain't know what to do with himself. What? You already bought a what? You already bought the ring. Yeah, bro, he already bought the ring. Okay. So he says that the two of them have talked about marriage a lot, you know. So they decided they're going to have a party with, they went from an Irish party to a prohibition theme. And I'm not quite sure what the connection is. I mean, I mean, unless you're going to make the connection with illegal, with bootlegging of liquor, but hell, everybody was bootlegging the liquor, the Italians, the Irish, black folk, like, so, I wasn't quite sure where we were going with this, but either way, they're gonna host a party at their house, uh, with the Irish theme, and with the Prohibition theme, excuse me, and it was really funny, um, I thought it was really funny how, um, um, I thought it was funny about something, I lost my train of thought, shoot, um, Oh, I thought it was funny how they were talking about the house, like Polly's house and how nice it is. And Frank was like, so you so you live in there now? She was like, yeah. He was like, so you're not coming back? Like, I guess to her other house, she was like, well, that's not the plan. Like, the plan is that I'm, I stay there, like, 
and I'm I'm there forever. And again, Frank just don't know what to do with himself. Like he really just don't know what to do with himself. So we get to Teresa and um Louis. Now listen, I'm gonna tell y'all something. I I honestly have not like in real time when this stuff was going on in real time. I honestly wasn't following a lot of the like blogs and stuff and telling us what was going on with Teresa and Melissa. But clearly something has happened because Louie is pissed. And Teresa is saying how she hasn't talked to her brother. And um, Melissa sent this text saying that they weren't coming to the rehearsal dinner, that they were only coming to the wedding. And she's upset about it. And Louie's like, well, you have to know if there's a rehearsal, if there's a wedding, there's going to be a rehearsal dinner. The rehearsal dinner is for the people that's in the wedding. They not in the wedding. Why would they be worried about coming to your dad on rehearsal dinner? Like, and then there was something with the mom, with Louie's mom. So they had to call Louie's mom to find out what they had to do or whatever. And um, they called the mom and she was like, whatever you want me to do, that's fine. And she was like, see, see, like their family is just so easy. They don't make things hard. And I'm like, because they're in the wedding. Like, you're, like, you're upset. Like, you're not understanding what they're upset about. They're upset. Because they weren't included. Because they weren't being a part of the, the wedding. Because they weren't feeling like they were part of the family. So you calling Louie's family about stuff for the wedding that they're already in. It's not the same. And then Teresa was like, I mean, I just don't understand. You know, why Why are they doing this? Why are they doing this? And Louie's like, well, I don't care if they come. Matter of fact, I wish they wouldn't even come to the wedding at this point. Like, I'm sick of it. And he's like turning red. And he's, like, going off on Joe and, I mean, and poor, not poor Teresa, because I ain't going to say poor Teresa. But Teresa is sitting there like, okay, well, I don't even know what to say about this. But, I mean, you can see the look on her face. It's like, okay, Louie, you, you're doing a lot. You, you're doing a lot. But Louie is, like, really going off. And then later on in the episode, he goes off even more. But it's just like, again, I'm not understanding what y'all not understanding. And I'm not saying that Melissa's perfect and Melissa hasn't done anything and all that. I'm not getting into that whole last 10 year history i'm just talking about this right here you didn't invite the woman to be a part of the wedding all of this comes from that i don't understand what y'all don't understand why would they come to your um and then it's funny because now melissa and them don't know this yet because they haven't watched the show but this is the same rehearsal dinner that he didn't even want to invite them to that he only invited them to because he got caught on camera saying he didn't want them to come and Teresa was like no we gotta invite everybody babe so that's what y'all mad about? I'm like, y'all are really cracking me up with this. And I said I ain't want to spend the whole season talking about this wedding, but damn it, we did. Although I tried to minimize it as much as possible. Anyway, <coughs> excuse me. So then we have this whole scene with Danielle and her mom. Um, first, they talk about her business and how, you know, eventually she wants to get a brick and mortar. It's, you know, really hard to sell the clothes online. You can't really... You know, you take good pictures, but it still doesn't really tell the full story. And, you know, she's a struggling entrepreneur, blah, blah, blah. Great. Then they get into the conversation with her brother. Well, come to find out, the brother ain't talking to the mama either. And the mama is like, I don't know what I did. Like, if we could just talk and we could work this out. And Danielle is like, you know, I just don't know. I just don't know. You know, he doesn't want me to be a part of my life. And, you know, I would give anything. My brother, if he called me tomorrow, you know, I would be there for him. Let me say this. We keep getting stuck on the brother stopped speaking to her after the whole Instagram thing. We jumped right over the story that she told Melissa, probably the second episode, about the sister-in-law and the wedding situation. I honestly think that whatever is going on with the brother, it stems from that conflict over the wedding and the sister-in-law. Remember, you know, remember back during that time, during season two, people were talking, I mean, episode two, we were talking about, ooh, next season they need to bring the sister-in-law on because I'm sure that she's got a different story to tell. Yeah, I'm sure she has a different story to tell. So honestly, that is who we need to talk to, okay? Um, But okay, girl, go off there, yeah, go off. Then we have... um. What's the face? Oh, shoot. Jennifer. And Jennifer and her brother. Okay. Now, we know that her brother was in Turkey because remember when her parents went to go visit him during COVID, during um, all of that, 
His wife didn't have her visa, so he had to shut down his business and go to Turkey. Well, he's back. But, of course, he has to start over. Now, this is the problem with people like Jennifer. Jennifer, because she can, and I do think she really loves her brother, and this was coming from, you know, a good place. But because of the, the way she is, because of her personality, it really comes off as, look what I did for you, and you better not ever forget it. So, like, for example... When she was in her confessional, she was like, I got them an apartment, and because I know the owner of the building, we got a really good rate that I know they can afford, you know, and um, I got an uh, um, interior designer to come in and decorate everything for them. You're welcome. And I was like, see, it's that extra you're welcome. That's my problem. And then she was showing them around. See, you have this, you have that. You got a king-size bed. I made sure you had this and that. And I'm like... Again, do I think she did it? She loves her brother? Yes. But her personality, it just, even in the midst of her talking about doing this great thing for her brother, it just came off very, look at what I did for you. And don't forget about it. And then she sits down and talks to her brother. And she's trying to give her brother this whole breakdown about Bill. First of all, I don't feel like her brother cared. And again, not from the sense of he doesn't care about his sister. But the brother even said to her, I mean, basically what the brother said was, well, your husband works hard. You take care of the kids. Like, that's your job. And Jennifer was like, yeah, I know, but I'm tired. Like, I need some help. I'm tired sometimes. And his, per like, his mindset, like, you could see the look on his face was like, I'm not understanding the problem. Your husband works. You do everything else, you know? And it just looked like he was so checked out of this conversation. I mean, clearly they were just filming a scene. Clearly, she was just finding another opportunity to talk about what Bill doesn't do for her child. But anyway, and then she talked about how they were struggling early on and they, when he was a resident, blah, 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 child. Anyway, then we see a scene with Rachel. Um, the adoption is moving forward, um, and they pulled the son in to let the son know what's going on because in case the mom reaches out to him, they, they were like, let us know. You know, she reaches out to you. We need to know she's reaching out to you because... You know, of course, now this is becoming a legal situation and we just want to, you know, basically know what's being said or whatever. And, of course, he's happy. He wants her to adopt him. He said he's been wanting it. Now, Rachel, I ain't going to tell you that the people are saying that this is just a storyline because if you wanted to adopt that boy, you could have been adopted that boy. Now, while all of a sudden, you're trying to adopt that boy. Now, I'm just telling you what the people said. And then his biological mama says she ain't been, she ain't been served with nothing yet, that this was all just a play for the story. Now... The mama might not have been served because they can't find her. But neither here nor there, child. Neither here nor there. Um, and then, basically, everybody is getting ready for the party. You know, we have everybody talking about... Y'all know how they do. We had Danielle talking to her husband. Um, and, again, revisiting this whole Marge and Marge's friend, telling all the business. And, of course, she's like, everything... Uh, everything is Marge's fault. All roads lead to Marge because, you know, um, Teresa, and then we have Jennifer talking to Bill, who we know don't give a damn, talking about, you know, Teresa was, you know, Teresa did ask Marge's friend, well, why didn't Melissa go after Marge last year? Like, does she have something on her? And Jennifer was like, yes, she does. Teresa, you really are on this whole Melissa should have defended me thing last year. Like, you really are on that kick. Like, it is ridiculous. Um, then we see Melissa and Joe, you know, they're getting dressed, they're getting their makeup done and they end up calling Frank cause they're like, well, is Frank coming? This is for the Irish prohibition party. So they called to see if Frank is, you know, if Frank is coming and Frank was like, yeah, you know, I'm coming. He was like, yeah, we went to dinner, you know, so we kind of, you know, we kind of, you know, got to know each other a little bit better, whatever. And he brought up the wedding thing about, about Polly having a ring. And so Melissa was like, oh my gosh, maybe this is an engagement party. Maybe this is getting ready to be, you know, an engagement party. And Frank was like, yeah, I don't, I don't know about that. I was like, mm-hmm, there you go, back in your feelings again. You had started crawling out, but now you back in your feelings again, Frank. Back in your feelings. Then we saw Marge talking to Joe, um, again, talking about her ex-friend and what her ex-friend has or has not said and whether she trusts the ex-friend or whatever, you know. So we're building up till next week, which they're going to have this big Irish party. 
And from the previews, it looks like it's a whole bunch of damn fights going on, child. Y'all know how they do. It is the season finale, honey. So we have next week, which is the season finale. And then I feel like we're only going to have a two-part reunion. I don't know how they're going to pull three parts out of this season. But then again, they do be finding a way, child. They will, they will, they will squeeze blood out of a turnip. So I'm thinking we're going to have another three to four weeks of Real Housewives of New Jersey, child. Anyway, let me know what you guys think. I'll talk to y'all later. Peace.